Hello everyone, amateur meteorologist First and Weather here. It is November 20th, 2021, and we have Thanksgiving week coming up, and it has been a very interesting past few days in terms of the weather over the lower 48. Initially, it was looking like we are going to see a potent upper-level system moving through uh, the, the eastern United States, which was going to really bring in a very amplified system that could have potentially brought uh, some very active weather to the I-95 corridor, and there was a lot of media hype. There was a lot of sort of false advertisement of a really big system impacting the Northeast, and that really has not uh, come to fruition. It looks very likely now that Thanksgiving weekend, and th or Thanksgiving week rather, should be relatively calm, aside from a strong cold front that will push through uh, this upcoming Monday. So this video is going to be very informal. I'm just going to be going through some of the, the latest weather news and uh, the general forecast and outlook for the next few days, and uh, maybe even a, a look at some of the winter variables that... Um, are shaping out right now. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, this right here, first of all, is the GFS uh, 18Z run uh, valid uh, or initialized uh, or valid for 6C Sunday. As you can see, pretty nothing really too extreme. We have relatively light, uh, typical weather, seasonable temperatures over the northeast. If we take this through time, you can see that on Monday, this is when your cold front comes through. And, I, and just for some comparison, just to show you how much this front has weakened how much the models have reduced uh, the, amp the amplification of this system. If you go just a few runs back, you can see how much better looking the system was compared to what it is uh, now today. Also, you can see just how thick these or closer together these ISO heights are um, in the previous runs, indicating really the stronger winds, the stronger system, the colder magnitude of air coming in. And now if we go to the latest run, you can see they're very spread out, or they're at least a bit more spread out. The system is not as organized, it's a bit more, the convection is a bit more broken. Um, and so this is for about 12Z Monday. You can see that the front comes through some nice snows over southern Canada, uh, scattered showers, and maybe even a few rumbles of thunder over the eastern part of the country. And then after that, we get a really cold sort of day over the eastern United States. Temperatures running f about 10 to 15 degrees below average. Pretty windy. Uh, winds could gust up to 35 miles per hour at times, especially uh, in the northeast. And the the GFS is also picking up on maybe some lake effect snow in uh, Ithaca and the uh, Finger Lakes region. As of now, the winds will be a bit too westerly to really see any significant accumulating snow in the Ithaca region and the uh, sort of the, the snow belt areas. But a couple inches, uh, especially in areas that are more prone to see lake effect, uh, for example, the Catskills and Syracuse, they could see a couple inches of snow. But for the most part, if you look at the overall picture uh, for Tuesday, you can see it's relatively quiet. It's cold and windy, uh, very uh, seasonably cold, uh, and more like early January weather for the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic for Tuesday, but nothing that is really too extreme, aside from a few uh, strong wind gusts. There's no extreme precipitation, nothing really else of that sort. And then after that, we go through time. You can see that we have another ridge that sort of builds up. We have warm air evection coming through as another front that makes its way into the part of the country. And then the pattern just kind of turns sort of uh, sort of uh, active for most of the region uh, and sort of, um, for lack of a better term, uncertain. Uh, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, the, the ensembles are a bit sort of uh, flipping back and forth between what they're thinking the pattern is going to look like. And initially it was looking like we we're going to get very cold after Thanksgiving with lots of uh, blocking and troughing in the east and a uh, good negative NAO. And then the GFS ensemble really suddenly switched on that, showing a very warm outlook for the eastern country, part of the country. The EPS and, or the European ensemble was saying no. This morning it caved to the GFS. And there's just a lot of volatility uh, with what's going to happen. This is common in La Nina years. You have a lot of complex interactions occurring in the atmosphere, and that is causing uh, the models a great deal of difficulty in what exactly is going to happen. Now, if we go to the GFS ensemble right now, this is from Weatherbell, and we go to the 500 millibar height anomaly, and we go to the North American view. I generally prefer this view because it kind of gives you, or the Northern Hemisphere view, um, I generally prefer this view because it gives you a snapshot of what really is happening in the Northern Hemisphere. You get to see regions of blocking and uh, so, and basically see what's going on. And so if we take this now to Tuesday, the 20, let me go to the 12Z run. If we take this now to Tuesday, 18Z to the 23rd, you can see that big trough 
right? That big system coming through that cold front. Um, and then you can, you can see that sort of that cold high pressure coming in behind it. Um, but you can see that very quickly after that, you sort of get ridging on the eastern part of the country. And what I think I want to point your attention to is this area of very anomalous ridging southeast of Greenland and that extends into southwestern Canada. This is a very negative NAO. The negative NA, the NAO is projected to absolutely tank over the next few days. In fact, here is the uh, forecast for the NAO. Uh, let's see. Let me pull it up for you guys. You can see it's about to go very negative, about negative 2, negative 2.5 uh, deviations below the average. And then it should start to climb back up as we go through uh, the beginning of December. Now, one thing to note is there has been a correlation between the, the NAO leaving its negative phase um, and a winter storm on the eastern, somewhere in the eastern part of the country. So that does need to be watched, and especially the, the ensembles do show, show support. Uh, that is something that needs to be monitored. Now, if we look at the, ES, uh, the EPS ensemble, you can see that after, this is Thursday, November 25th, you have that really negative NEO, the 50-50 low right here. And initially, it was looking like something could happen. If we could get a system down here to phase with another with a disturbance coming in from the polar jet you could see a pretty significant northeast um, snowstorm with that very uh, negative nao that 50 50 low forcing a coastal track but unfortunately that has now sort of fizzled out i mean the ensembles still have you know some troughing in the east but nothing really that would promote a coastal storm you still have that very negative nao that positive pna um, that does help to promote something, but again, you have a positive EPO, which really does not help to promote cross-polar flow. If there was ridging in Alaska, you would see cold air from the Arctic pouring down into the country with this very strongly negative NEO, but unfortunately, that is not the, the, the case right now, and there's a reason for that. If you look to the ocean temperatures right now, um, you can see this big pool of below-average sea surface temperature anomalies south of Alaska. What that does is that promotes well below-average heights over that region, which sort of makes it very hard to experience ridging. And you've already seen the past couple of months some very persistent troughing over that region, which has helped to keep things a little bit toasty over the eastern part of the country. Now, as, as we go further through time, you can see that the model does actually show something that's not half bad. You have a, some ridging in the west, positive PNA, troughing in the east, still showing that negative NAO, even as we are approaching the end of November. And again, this is not an ideal pattern, but something definitely could happen for the, the interior portions of the Northeast. That is not out of the question. And then as we go further than that, it's still showing that negative NAO. And then that's when it really starts to show a bit of a pattern change for the first few days of November. You can see it, it really sort of breaks down that ridging in the West, has a big, big uh, below average height area over the Western and Central US. And has ridging extending all the way to the Hudson Bay on the eastern coast. And this would be a blowtorch sort of pattern with mild Pacific air. You can see that very strong pressure gradient here. That would basically force Pacific air like a jet right into the uh, into the uh, lower 48. And that would effectively ensure a very mild period for the, the, the United States, at least for the first part of December. But then after that, again, it, it's a bit on uncertain what's gonna happen. You can see that negative NAO breaks down like the models that the, like the NAO forecast here shows. Um, troughing the, the western U.S. So that is definitely something to bear in mind. I think maybe at the end of November there is some potential for something, some sort of coastal or inland track that could uh, cause some winter weather over the northeast. But the way it looks right now, the first part of December could be decidedly warm and mild, which is very untypical for a La Nina winter to see a warm start to December. I mean, things could change, and of course, this is just the first few days of the month, so after this, you could see a very strong influx of uh, polar air, or Arctic air even, uh, but right now, it does look like by the end of the month, we are going to see sort of a pattern change for the eastern part of the country. Now, if we switch to the, G the GFS ensemble, just to see if there is agreement within the ensembles, uh, let's switch, go back to the uh, upper air height anomalies and go to the northern hemisphere. You can see that, again, shows that amplified system or that trending system that's uh, becoming less and less amplified for the next, next, or this week, rather. Uh, you can see this is for Tuesday. Again, that system goes through, shows a very negative NAO like the European Ensemble, but doesn't really show any sort of major storm threat. 
sort of keeps the system too far south, makes this one too progressive, too fast moving. Um, sh same story like the European shows ridging in the west, positive EPO, which really sort of limits cross polar flow and Arctic air from reaching the eastern part of the country. And then after that, um, as you go through time, it also sort of breaks down the negative NEO, brings troughing into the west and ridge ridging in the east. And it also has a very strong Pacific jet bringing in mild Pacific air into the eastern part of the country. Uh, so in general, some very good ensemble agreement uh, that at least the first part of December will turn pretty mild. Uh, so when you see sort of ensemble agreement like this, that is a good sign that uh, there is some sort of pattern change being indicated for the uh, latter part of the month and the beginning of December. Now, one thing I do also want to talk about is, let me see if I already have this up is the sea surface temperature anomalies around the, around the globe. So the PDO, as you know, that horseshoe region shape of sea surface temperature anomalies, it is deeply negative right now. You have the classic warm pool signature in the middle Pacific and that cold sort of uh, angle of water hugging the entire coast. Um, and so a negative PDO is very common with the La Nina winter. The question is, what type of La Nina phase do we have? There are multiple types of La Ninas. You have Western or Central La Ninas, Eastern-based La Ninas, and even uh, Modokai La Ninas. And so, as you might have remembered in my winter forecast, I was talking about the likelihood of seeing a mixed La Nina, where the waters are not too far to the east, not too far to the west, where you sort of have a hybrid version, which is pretty rare. And that can cause sort of interesting weather. It prevents the blowtorch you see in many western-based La Ninas. It also sort of goes away from the predominantly negative NAO winters you see with eastern-based La Ninas. But what I'm seeing now is quite surprising. You have definitely a sort of trend to see these waters shifting, the, the coldest waters shifting a bit east. And that is something that, do, that does need to be monitored. Is this a temporary trend we're seeing, or uh, could this be something long-term that could uh, really sort of shift the phase of this La Nina to being more eastern-based, and that would have significant repercussions for the synoptic pattern over the lower 48. An eastern-based La Nina, where you have the coldest waters focused right off the coast of South America, does tend to promote troughing in the east and ridging in the west. And the opposite is true for a central-based La Nina, which promotes troughing in the west and ridging in the east. Now, let's take a look at the Enzo uh, temperature anomalies and how they've been trending the past few days. Uh, let me see if this is the one. Nope. I believe this is it right here. So this is sort of a cross-section of temperature anomalies going all the way down uh, to the deep ocean floor, about 450 meters deep. And you can see this is where the coldest pool of water is located. And you can see it has gradually shifted east um, as we've gone from the, the uh, middle of September to November. It was over here, and it is now solidly in this area right here. you have also seen a, seen a warm pool of water emerge in the western side of the La Nina zone. And this is definitely not typical of a mixed or uh, west-based La Nina. So this is something that definitely does need to be watched. Um, if, especially if the December that we see is pretty mild, that could also support that the atmosphere is behaving like an east-based La Nina because usually with central and mixed La Ninas or hybrid La Ninas, you typically see a very cold December and then moderation as you go throughout the winter. Whereas with an east-based La Nina, you see... Uh, a warm December followed by a very cold or colder than average, at least for the eastern United States, January and Februarys. Uh, so this definitely does need to be monitored, and uh, I will have future videos on this uh, regarding Enzo and what it's gonna, what the effects it will have on our winter. But overall, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, to, to recap, I think the the system that was, you know, became very prominent for this Thanksgiving. Uh, Definitely not looking like anything serious now. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday should be just fine. Should be a bit chilly, a bit windy, but other than that, things do look just fine. After that is when things get a bit uncertain. There is looking like a, a slight window of opportunity for winter weather, especially in the interior northeast around the November 28th uh, through 30th time frame as the NAO shifts from deeply negative to uh, positive. History has shown that when those phase transitions do happen, you can sometimes see a winter storm. But after that, the first week of December, as of now, does look a bit mild. So we should see uh, sort of a nice pattern break from this chilly pattern we've been seeing. Uh, but that could change. So 
I'll uh, keep you guys updated on that. And overall, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.